going to call the meeting to order at 5.35 p.m. Um, we, I'm going to skip to the board reorganization as I try to have the lead of the board for the least amount of time possible. So I'm looking to have any nominations for a chairperson for the East Montpelier School Board. Nominate Ruben Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second it. I see a second. I, is there a discussion? Or? Yeah, I was going to ask if there were any other nominations. Oh, well, I kind of felt like we should ask if people want to keep what they want, what they wear, because there's a lot to it. And I know you're on other boards. I, uh, as long as everybody is okay with what I've been doing, I am happy to keep going. I'm happy with you. <laughs> you just don't want to do it. There's that too. I gotta say, I've always had an interest in being a board chair. Mm -hmm. uh, but and, and I know that there's gonna be a lot of transition. You know, like, uh, like 46 stuff and you know stuff like that. So I, I did want to. I know that I mentioned this to you a year ago, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, so I just wanted. So I'm not. I mean, Unhappy, but right. I, you know, it just it doesn't. Hopefully, you don't have as much access to stuff anymore. Yeah, so I'm not, but I, I'm not looking for an out at this time. Okay, I will be honest that I, I intend to run my term out and then I'm probably gonna tap out. <laughs> This. When's your term out? Uh, not this March, but the following. I think I have, was re-elected to a three-year term <laughs> last nice year. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my long-term plan. Short so since we're just discussing, it might make sense maybe next year. <clears throat> that you that, not that might it. make sense. And yeah. you could support someone in their first and year. Orderly transition. Yes. So it looks like we're at the end of the discussion. So unless there's any more. All those in favor of Reuben Bennett being the chair of the East Montpelier Board, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions? Congratulations, sir. I turn it back over to you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I will bring us to uh, two point. We'll do, we all back. right, yeah, well, we'll let's finish the reorg. Yeah. Yeah. I second it. <laughs> all right, we're going to this board. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's keep going. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. No. <laughs> just uh, I, no discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, elect a clerk. I nominate the first two. Someone else could nominate something. I nominate Wendy. Nominate Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not make any changes here, people. Yes, we're not making. I'm still getting used to it. Maybe next year I'll allow for to do some stuff more. Hi. <laughs> Is there any? <laughs> did I get a second? I don't think I got. You did. Oh, okay. Okay. Did. Right. Floor did. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No discussion. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 We probably should have just done this as a slate, but when you, I'll you warn you, when you get down to 2.8, I would like to do some context setting and okay. and uh, 2.5. Yep. Or 2.4. Sorry, 2.4. No. Okay. Um, Established time and day of regular monthly meetings. Currently right right now, this is working. Yep. This day. Time is, Felicia and I will do what you need. I think I can say selfishly for the two of us, 5.30 is great, but whatever works for you guys. 5.30 is good. 5.30 is a bit of a struggle, like it was today, but, yeah. but as long as you are all okay with me occasionally strolling in a minute or two late, then let's not mess with success. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's okay. okay. So third Monday at 
and then according to the schedule that we've already laid out, do we need to specify that or just? So here's here's what's going to kind of happen. Um, I've said this to every board so far that's met, um, is that I learned from two years ago I made a calendar. Folks didn't like the calendar because it would get altered. So last year I didn't make a calendar. I learned that that made even more chaos. <laughs> so on Thursday when we have our executive committee, no good deal. guess what I'm coming out with? A calendar. Yeah. A calendar. A calendar. Okay. So, but we will try, and it's going to be a discussion probably at the executive committee, and I hope, and maybe even at the supervisor union board. I just want to say either way, um, but that we say so. When are the carousels happening? And we're really clear for everybody. Okay. Okay, do we need a motion and a second on that? Yes, you do. Yeah. I make a motion that we stay the way we are. Of course, that's going to make my husband mad, so don't say I did that motion, but I just did. I'll say you did that. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very much upset that the select board meetings and the school board meeting are the same on night the same and night. public are interested yeah. in East Montpelier. Oh, 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 so you don't have to make that motion. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Get mad at me. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I heard Floor Things make a motion and Lindy made a second. Mm -hmm. Sure. They meet later, though. Is there I'm any I'm discussion? Here. They meet at seven. So, if somebody so really if we're really on our game, we could get out of here on our right. Uh, if it's a town forum or something like that, could yeah. Yeah. make the transition. It would. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Opposed, abstain. Thank you. Establish the newspaper and locations for official posting. Great. I make a motion we keep it the same. Which is? Times Argus, school, town clerk. Second. Any discussion? The three locations, it, it's the post school, office. School, post town office, clerk. and town clerk. Right, but I would suggest that you and go. And the paper is Times Argus. Yeah, yeah, but you yeah. go to two. Sorry, I didn't talk to Alicia. But we, it's, you can, we'll post it as many places as you want it. But the requirement is only two, and that's what I've been saying to all boards. I mean, they tell us front porch forum, other places. Yeah. It just makes it if we skip a step somewhere, we get it right. We get it as no restrictions. It's up Without, to you. at the risk of sounding obstructionist or traditionalist, it seems like if somebody was grumpy at the board for some reason, that could be something that they might grump about. So I wonder if there's. Grump about good, where we do it? about the fact that we cut the number of places and so they went to their oh. usual place which of course would be the place that we would cut we'll so they didn't see oh. the so we'll, we'll just keep these three I think. just yeah, keep so doing it and it's just not an official yeah, we'll just, right it's not an official we'll closing list. List. we also yeah. do, we do it yeah we, yeah we do it other places too i mean it just okay i, I just just covers us we make a mistake right yeah. if we make a mistake it I'll okay. tell you a couple times we've had to do a 24-hour, or not an emergency, but a special meeting mm -hmm. for you. It's easier, especially the town clerk, with our my mm -hmm. with Chris's and my relationship with Rosie and with Bruce, mm -hmm. to say, hey, you I'm sending you, can you please put this up mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. And then... So the school and the town clerk are our official ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll put it at Dudley's. Okay. Yeah. And did I hear a second? I'm sorry. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Elect a representative and alternate to the WCSU Executive Committee. Another uh, name, Stephen, for the Executive Committee. I'll second. I'll nominate okay. four for the alternative. I'll second. That's what we've done. So. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, I will tell people that it's. Um, it would be more than beyond this year. I don't, I don't feel the same need to be on the executive committee. So um, I'd be willing to look at other assignments next year. Okay. Just for this year, I think it's important for some continuity. Okay. I have a motion. It's not entirely clear who made it. Steve. No. Oh, yeah. Steve. Nominated so Flora, and Flora nominated that. Steve, and then Lindy. And I seconded both. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, elect three voting members to the supervisory union. Two of them we've already selected through the executive, so that means we need one more. 
I nominate Darcy. Darcy. I'll take that one. I second it. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Excellent. I'd like a representative of an alternate to each of the following WCSU committees negotiations. I think this is the one that so I want to talk about. Let me, I just want to talk about the workload a little bit before you got into this. Um, nego next year is a negotiating year for both teachers and ESP support <coughs> folks. So there'll be, that will be up. Um, and that, even though it says there's an alternate, there really isn't because usually what happens with the ground rules, it says once you start, you're in, mm -hmm. and someone can't come and sit in for you, and you try to make as many means as possible because it's a continuing conversation. Um, and that the two times I've done it with the teachers and with the support staff, that's the way we want. They wanted to go, and I actually agree with it because I think it gives you a um, there's continuity. continuity to the discussion. It's hard to come in on that. Policy usually meets the um, second Monday of every month we didn't this past month but it's one of those things where um, there have been four years ago I think Steve when you were on this um, we set the goal to have all required policies up to date within five years and to have them re revi uh, re looked at at that point we're, we're within all yeah. but two policies and I believe and Linda you can correct me if I'm wrong but I think we're going to get to the last two this spring I think we are we're really close uh -huh. Uh, the next piece of work to do is what's called a policy blitz to look at all the policies that aren't required to say what do we need, what don't we need, and to talk about SU wide some more. Um, the transportation, we're in the second, next year will be a second year of a five year contract. I think it will be an as needed, but I really don't see it having a lot. Um, school quality currently sits with U32. I'm going to be making a recommendation to the executive committee this Thursday, and I hope they bring it to the full board, that this not be a U32 committee anymore, but that it be a supervisory union committee, because we're trying to align all the, the school monitoring work. And I really believe that that should be an issue piece. Can you ask a question? Is that the same, the quality monitoring? Yeah, yeah, yeah same, same group, same, same okay. charge, just move it over from U32 to the oh, supervisor's so. union. Same, same we, work. We were seeing it as a Yeah, he, right, but it was never, it, it never like came okay. from, it was, it's kind of the same way the student learning outcomes started too. It started from U32, then came into the supervisory union board. And the school st start time um, is going to become quite active right now. Um, I believe it will be active next fall as well. Um, and then depending on where we go from input from the community, um, there's going to be a point where it turns over to the administration. Uh, I just don't know exactly where. And then coming back to the probably the full board, I hope by December, if we're going to make a change for the following school year. That's and I made up that timeline. We haven't talked about that really, but I think that that's it's only appropriate that parents have a year's a half year's notice if we're really going to make some big switches. Yeah, yeah. So that's the work that I see and the. Um, school quality is, is it third Thursday? Third Thursday. Third Thursday, policy second Monday, but all that is up to that, I'm even going to say to those committees, it's a little bit malleable because as we start to set this calendar again, we might say, hey, there's some, there's some work. And we would do everything through like a, a doodle poll, like what day of the week during the month is good for everybody to make everyone, on, to allow everyone that's on the committee to meet, mm -hmm. just so we, everyone can plan on regularity. And the school quality just changed Thursday. So right. And the, and the school start time right now is all over the map. Yeah. There's no regular. That's what I know about those committees. Okay. So let's take negotiations first. I believe I am on the negotiations committee with Darcy. I think so. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, I'm really concerned about my ability to stick that one through. Um, I've been on it, and I would be willing to be on it. I haven't done it the past few years because my wife used to work at U32. I can't do it. She no longer my, works there. I'm a teacher. <coughs> so I, 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 I'm it's expressing a willingness to, to doing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would like to not be the primary, but <laughs> <laughs> I would be willing to do it again. I mean, okay. So I think I'm going to nominate. Uh, Steve 
and Darcy is alternate. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, policy committee, that is Lindy, uh -huh. and I'm not sure who's alternate. Is there an alternate? I don't think there is. I don't think there, there is. Would you be willing to continue? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I would nominate Lindy I'll second. to the policy committee. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Transportation. Thank you. That's to me. Yeah. Um, is it up for a contract now? No. no it's not. It's just right. Okay. Not not sure. Sure. If it comes together, I'll be shocked. Yeah, it's the perfect one. Right, yeah. So it doesn't mean it. I don't want it. I nominate <laughs> Robin. <laughs> I second it then. <laughs> Do we need an alternate? alternate? Um, we should have an alternate. I'll, I, I can. Do you want me to do it? Sure, yeah. if you don't mind being an alternate. Uh, I think Stephen did the nomination, yeah. I did the second. Yeah. So it's Reuben and Darcy. Darcy is the alternate? Correct. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 School start. That is me. And do oh, I don't quality? Have oh, no. School no. quality is next. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I made up my own order. I nominate for. <laughs> I second it. Who's been doing it? And I accept. An alternate? Alternate? Anybody want to be an alternate? I'll be the alternate unless someone wants it. You don't have, have to do anything if you're an alternate. <laughs> 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 it's always pretty reliable. <laughs> so I'll be the alternate unless someone wants to step up. Thank you. Um, uh, discussion? Any, all of those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed to abstain. Thanks. All right. Schools start. Um, that is me, and I don't know that we have an alternate. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to continue that work. That's okay. I nominate nice. Reuben. Okay. I can be the alternate. <laughs> I can just be alternate. <laughs> you guys just alternate. show up. <laughs> so I'd be willing to support that, Darcy, with the understanding that next year you're going to chair something. <laughs> you're going to be the primary somewhere next year. You can't keep being alternate for us. Sure. <laughs> Scare. <laughs> right. Um, was there a second? I have a second. Thanks. Then let me take transportation this year. Because <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> that makes sense. Because then you would have <laughs> All of those in favor of the uh, dark time members, please say aye. 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 Thanks. Um, I believe that takes us to appointing a truant officer, which by statute, I believe, has to no, be. Not no, by no. statute. Just by would know I'm in that way. Unless you want to fill out some paperwork. Nope. No. Not a second. Sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, the truant officer, Alicia. Oh. I nominated her. Steve. Okay. Thank you. I know she was anxious to get it. Yes. She was anxious to get it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I love it when I receive those little pieces. Okay. And with all of that out of the way, uh, I'm going to bring us back up to the reception of guests. Yes. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hi. Thanks for coming. Um, and I'm presuming that you're here for Act 46. Yeah. I'm here for three reasons. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for no reason whatsoever. So I was I, 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 I mean, I, I, <laughs> I like a sweater though. Yeah. <laughs> Should I share with you? I can share with you. I will move us right to all right, public great. comments and correspondence. Let's do that. Um, first of all, I just want to say how much I like the font on your name plates. So, <laughs> except my wallet. Uh, yeah, so firstly, I just wanted to come to uh, answer any questions that folks may have about the 
uh, hearing at AOE. Of course, you have your own uh, board representative who participated in that hearing, so maybe that's less necessary here than it might have been for some of the other board meetings that have been attending uh, last week and this week. Um, so that's the first reason. The, the second reason is uh, that uh, to his own unending joy and to uh, our chagrin, uh, Stephen Look is term limited in his uh, role as the chair of the WCSU <coughs> board. Uh, I intend to stand uh, to uh, for that position at the meeting on the 28th, and I just wanted to let you know that and ask for your support. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about that as well. And then the third reason is that uh, as we kind of emerge from this very long and, and somewhat tiresome uh, Act 46 process, um, I find myself uh, very, very interested in how potentially our boards in WCSU can work more effectively together. So in that spirit, I'm actually attending all the the board meetings uh, this month, and I'm committing to doing that at least three times in the year. I may be able to do it more, but I can't commit to to uh, commit to more than that. Um, and it's just to get a sense of kind of how all the boards operate and, and what they're talking about and concerned with and prioritizing um, and angry about or happy about or any of the above. Uh, and it's been very interesting to attend uh, the meetings, the three that I did last week. And it was on that basis that I invited Scott to join me uh, for this one and for Monday and Wednesday. Um, and I, there have been other board members, um, Berlin and, and Callis, who have expressed some interest in possibly cross-pollinating some of the meetings also. So I hope that that's something that might, uh, time permitting, uh, happen more in the future too. So that's why I'm here. Thanks for tolerating. <laughs> the rating is pretty uh, low bar to set for <laughs> anything more for tolerating me. <laughs> but uh, just to second what Matthew said in particular on that last bit about um, wanting to be able to work together, uh, the best thing about the whole Act 46 process, as far as I was concerned, was getting to know. Uh, colleagues better working together and really feeling a sense of, of common purpose uh, in, a, in a very strong way. And I don't want to let that peter out. Uh, I think there's so much that we can do. And especially, we have no idea what the Agency of Education and the State Board will come up with in terms of their plan. Um, we could have a curveball thrown our way. Um, who knows? But I, I think to be able to have the kind of relationships that we've been able to build that are, that are um, strong and flexible and creative and um, you know, mutually supporting, I think, I think it's really great and I want to keep that up. Thanks. I, I, I appreciate all of the you're doing and what you've just said and um, I think I actually share your view that um, the work on Act 46 did serve an important purpose to build bridges between our communities and I think um, I think it's important to keep that going so um, yeah and thank you for making the commitment to sit through a whole bunch of board meetings. That's <laughs> and that inspiring community would otherwise just be a lump of man sitting in front of the wood stove. Yeah, I find that hard to believe, Scott. <laughs> um, great. I think Thank I'm going to, yeah. I feel the same way, so yeah. I have to to some other boards, which Great. I've been doing but for SBSBA, so I've been trying a little harder, but I would love to see. Yeah, uh, likewise, schedule permitting, and that's a pretty big asterisk for me, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but certainly feel free to shoot me a note and let me know what you're doing. 
Okay, um, I do believe we are on to the consent agenda. It's to approve the minutes of February 21st, March 3rd, and March 6th. We're gonna make a motion to approve the minutes of the 21st, March 3rd, and March 6th as a slate. The only thing, um, I don't know if, it, if you need it on or not, but the March 3rd, there were, there were audience people in the community members that weren't listed on here. I know um, Bruce and right. Jane and I has been. I don't know if it, it I think they, we just put the board. Well, we, we could still discuss it and make it yeah. changes to any of them mm -hmm. with the motion as a slate. Yeah. I second it. So we can we can add uh, yeah so it'll be Paul and Jay Knight and Jay Jane Jane, Jane Jane Knight like a knight okay. and uh, yeah, and Bruce Bruce Johnson, Johnson. and um, Ellen's husband yeah oh Michael 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 Dwayne, Dwayne. Michael Dwayne. was Colin there yet or did he come in right at the very end yeah he, he wasn't the end. there for the okay. yeah he wasn't there for. Well, I guess he was in the park. Yeah. Yeah, let's move up. Yeah, Colin. Colin. McCaffrey. Oh, it's late, but. And I was there. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. Any other discussion? Yeah, I had one. Um, I apologize, I probably have never noticed it, but the format mm -hmm. of which so the heading format is different for all three. Oh. Yes. Because I, I three different notepapers. Three different notepapers. Right. But then so I we, sent we it can't to filter them through We can. We can. It, I, I don't know. It makes People sense. Can, mm -hmm. it, it just I look at the at the on page two, I look at yeah. the regular, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of information here that's not there on the other two yep. that I think could be valuable. Plus, it yeah. there's some value I think we can do that. Yeah. I vote. You know how I feel. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Actually, we can plan for those last two sets of minutes. Okay. So the just to summarize the revisions, it's the. Um, attendees for third and then we're just going to put the minutes for the third and the sixth on the same letterhead as the uh, um, February 21st. Yes? Yeah, even, even the ones that Rosie took those, is that... That was the annual meeting. That's not a school board meeting. Yeah. School yeah, district meeting. It is, a, it is a district meeting. It's a district yeah. meeting, not a school board meeting. Yeah, so that's just oh. the same. Oh. It's, yeah, that's it's a public. Yeah, it's, it's a, a public. different yeah, meeting. Yeah, it's a public meeting. Okay. So, those so we just make the change for the third. It's up to you. Okay. I can do it either way. I think that's what you should do because the town clerk was the note taker for that. Okay. So keep the sixth way there. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Sorry okay. about that, folks. Let's okay. throw this thing down there. Further discussion? As long as you break it. <laughs> Sometimes I just hate those little things. I agree. <laughs> I'm not seeing any. All those in favor, please say aye. I just moved right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Discussion agenda, Act 46. All eyes turn to floor. <laughs> and Matt. <laughs> Scott. And there. Scott. Scott. And Scott. <laughs> so we, this is great. <laughs> I just sat there and watched the three. That's right, man. We've got the but, whole. But Matt sent a really nice uh, video review and didn't have really much to add to this because he did such a good detailed review of what happened. We, it, the secretary was really generous with her time. She drove, built away in a snowstorm to meet with us. She was a few minutes late, but I, I think the meeting didn't last half an hour, it was almost an hour by the time we were we were done. And they asked us, I guess the main points for me were that they asked us two questions that we were not really able to answer very well then, and we were hoping to put some things together to send some information back, and those two questions being 
what have we implemented for, from the special education report that Alice Adney did in 2005? 11. 11. 11. And the other one is how many of the efficiency opportunities that were given to us in the two efficiency studies have we actually implemented or in the process of implementing. But they want, like, she didn't really want to talk about it. She wanted a number. Is it five? Is it six? Is, and, you know, and we all found ourselves a little bit cut back by, by that. But then in everything else, she was, uh, she did say at the end that she understands that it takes people to, to, to move uh, things along. But she and uh, Donna Russo and Brad James, who was there too, were, you know, were pretty strong in what was the data and what was that we had presented to them. It was, it was a quarter conversation, but I, I really, there's no way to tell what way, which they want to keep the conversation mm -hmm. uh, going. So they were very generous to say, you can submit materials if you want uh, to add extra to what you have submitted from, from the report. But other than those three questions that really took me, those two questions, uh, everything else we were able to, to, to talk. Mm -hmm. About it, it was basically we we did a, we made a decision as a as a group that we were going to do it based on on the report. We didn't try to just Call have a, a little right. talk about how to convince them about anything. We, we were very we were there to listen and to answer questions and and like Matt and start to add something. And, Either way, uh, yes. um, I'll just repeat some of the other boys that sounded that asking for my gut feeling about the meeting. <laughs> I'm sure to stay away from that. Which I'm quite wary of, but uh, I usually have been saying that I thought the secretary, it was a very professional meeting, I thought the secretary was very uh, thorough and thoughtful. Mm -hmm. And I think she was very thoughtful and very professional about the meeting. I think she was very thoughtful and very professional about the meeting. I took her to be very sincere, uh, by which I mean that you know she seems very motivated to do things that will produce better outcomes for kids and will save money. And I think they're quite serious about that and don't want to leave opportunities on the table if they, they see them. Um, I think it would be fair to say that um, from their questions and the attitude that they were, you know, they have, some, they have questions about our proposal. Um, perhaps some, some skepticism, um, but I would say that they, they made it very clear that uh, they don't, they're not going to talk about their plans or what they're going to decide until they've had all the, the, the hearings and the meetings because it's something that they might do in Franklin might affect, you know, Windsor. You know, they have to look at the whole state. So they want to make sure that they are, and they, I, I thought the other sincere yeah. part was that they really were, were, I think, listening for input and trying to, you know, looking for ideas and they may have an idea of where they want to go, but they're, you know, they're still, you know, um, approaching these meetings in an open fashion. So um, that's all I would add. Yeah. The two other questions that she asked us, and because Scott is here, we get to talk about it too. Is that she she just said, you know, what happened with those three kindergarten students from Calais? The, there was there a conversation between between the boards? You know, the, what you know, were there any opportunities? And we, you know, I try to share that. We yeah, had to. Yeah, to, you know, three kids in class, but they were attending a voucher. I think that Romney and Middlesex had yeah, partners, but the kids were still separated by school. They were having integrated, so that was not. She actually, so had, she got, she cornered some of the numbers. She cornered, in the, yeah, that's really, so, said, you know, I was unfortunate to not be able to tell her. We actually met, as, you know, like I, you know, something mm -hmm. I feel strong and I talked to you about it, it, you know, that we should have, you know, met as boards and at least try to have a conversation. I don't think that that would affect it, her outcomes, but it was, you know, it was pretty, it, they, they know as well. <laughs> And then the other thing that they talked to us about was the regions, it, you know, what regions we were, we were, it, and it was a very frank conversation, and I can't stress how polite and knowledgeable they were all were about our. I felt like they had read the report, or someone had read the report. I, I, I feel like they all have, and somebody had given like, you know, good questions. questions. Yeah, inform, inform a nice, I don't know, it was, it was yeah. not a, 
He was even handed. He was even handed, and there was no, they were not trying to trigger us or any, you know, we were prepared for so many things. They weren't pulling punches either. They were not, you know. Yeah. They were asking serious questions. They were asking serious yeah. questions. So you mentioned so, something about vouchers. What was that? We just, oh, well, I mentioned that it, we had collaborated in my mind, but it's not totally translates. We had collaborated with Calas because instead of this, three preschoolers, I think it was three, oh, was going crazy. to a private daycare or a private preschool, they attended Calas, who's a voucher, they were East Montpelier residents, so, but there was coordination between schools, mm -hmm. right? But it was pre-K, not K. But it was pre-K, okay. mm -hmm. so. And she, she correctly pointed that out. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's a voucher system for pre-K. Yeah, because pre-K can yeah, go that anywhere. They was that, that they could have gone anywhere. That's, that's, that's a decision. But, but, but what I was trying to emphasize was that there was communication. Mm -hmm. but so, and then the district is the other thing that we talked about. If you know, we know that Cabot has done to us, and mm -hmm. Twinfield has done to us, and then they, they did talk briefly about Montpelier, you know, which, but other than that. So she did ask about the three next year kindergartners? No. That, oh, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. She did directly ask about the three kindergartners and how did that class, had it ended up? How that ended up at Callis. Yeah. And it, so, and it ended up at Callis, to stick at Callis, is that correct? Is that That's my understanding now. K, uh, K, K1, one. K1 and a two, she asked us, I mean, I had said to Flora and Scott and Matthew that I was gonna to try to stay out of the conversation, I was there to support, but when I know Rebecca well enough, when the, she looks at me, she expects a response out of me. So she looked at me a couple of times and gave me a direct question. I'm like, okay, get in here, start talking. And she looked at me, she said, so what are you doing instructionally? And I told her, I said, we'll have a class of 10, that's a K-1, and we'll have a class of 11 to 12 that will be second graders. <laughs> I tried to state just the facts. I hope I did that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, but, um, if I if I could just add my kind of color from um, my rose color, uh, I actually quite enjoyed the experience. It was it was rather fun, actually. It was a a, a nice um, as as Matthew and Flora are saying, uh, a really informed discussion and. But uh, no punches pulled. It was just mm -hmm. real, and it was great having you there, Bill. And just to not only as backup, but to be able to field those questions that were for the superintendent very yeah. clearly. Um, I I don't know. I mean, they did not telegraph anything of their intentions, mm -hmm. and nor would I have expected that. Right. But um, I'm I'm just wondering. To what degree now the process is the calculation becomes more, if you want to call it political, as opposed to kind of adjudicating um, in a uh, in a mechanical way according to um, rules and legal language. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I don't know if there is really any legal language or rules, <laughs> really from here. I think it's put your best recommendation forward, Secretary, to the State Board. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I would add is that she said to us, um, she asked about where we had done work together that wasn't part of state regulation or law. Mm -hmm. She came back and said they're hearing from a lot of proposals similar to ours, and that what we're claiming for, what we're saying is our working together is what we actually have to do to work right. together. Yeah. That's what I read in that sentence. Um, Matt said that. Yeah. So. Yeah, so <clears throat> we have to, I, in the meantime, I think, show what we show our stuff. Yeah. Put our best foot forward. Yeah. I just want to. I just want to say also that uh, you know, look, there, there may be, you know, if we intend to defend the alternative government structure proposal or put our best foot forward with regard to it, then we have some immediate incentive to, uh, you know, be acting acting in concert with one another. Mm -hmm. um, but I think our motivation and need to do that goes far beyond, Correct. you know, the um, whatever it might, impact it might have on the Act 46 deliberations. Yeah. Um, you know, it's and I think that's just to just echo what Scott said is sort of maybe the the, the most salient thing to emerge from this long conversation is that um, you know we have room to do that and we have reason to do that. Um, 
and we have options mm -hmm. to do that. So hopefully we can you know, sort of grab onto that momentum a little bit and, and do something. Well, one of the things I've been saying, I said it at Callison at Berlin and at Doty, there have been two actions that have been taken by the full SU board since I've been here. This is now my sixth year. The adoption, and in a way that was grassroots across all the local boards. There have been things that the full SU board has done, but not through a grassroots effort where the local boards came up and made a unified voice together. And one was the student learning outcomes, and the second one was the alternative governance proposal. And for me as your superintendent, that makes a very clear message. It makes it easy to operate. So I've been coining this phrase that I heard right before a meeting last week from somewhere else, unity of voice. And I think the best defense for Washington Central is a unity of voice. No matter what you do, mm -hmm. if, you stay, if you stay together working together, that's going to be better than anything else. I'm not saying it's going to win the day, but I think it's your best of showing we are actually working together. Because I was saying this to Matthew a little while ago. Uh, I don't remember when it was in the last week that we were talking, Matthew, but um, that we, the districts that have merged and have gone forward and have done a lot of work together, they didn't start at Act 46. They started working in carousel meetings and working together and doing what Scott and Matthew are here for tonight. And I've heard other board members saying they want to do the same thing. We started working together eight, ten years ago and figuring that out, building that culture. And it is our culture. Yeah. It is, it is our right. I would like to say as a board that supported consolidation some of the rose-colored glasses bother me in the sense of we have the big report, but sometimes it comes out that everyone was in favor of this alternate government, which isn't a big change from what we've been doing. And um, I thought some of it was very unpleasant through the Act 46. I mean, I think people know that. And I'm glad to be moving toward a more positive but there are some people who believe 32 board members for 1,400 kids and having board meetings almost every night of the week is a little much for a supervisory union or a district or whatever we become or we're called. And um, I just, you know, I read the report with the secretary. I think it'll be interesting to see what the state board does where it goes forward, because there are so many areas similar to us in size that have consolidated, have reduced board numbers, and are getting along. So that's my, but we as a board did say we were in favor of consolidation. Mm -hmm. And um, there was not overwhelming against in that survey. It was not. There was not overwhelming. And I, when she questioned, how do you know you didn't take it to a vote? It has bothered me that it didn't go to a vote one way or the other, wherever it went. It would have said what the community wanted, not just what board members wanted. And the Act 46 was mainly board members um, on that, um, not community. I mean, we are community. Yeah. We're all community members, but that I just, felt, I have to say that. Because I do think we work well together. I think the carousel meetings are a great way to go because it does reduce the individuality and the silos. But our kids are all going into the same global world, and that's what, it, what matters, is what we're getting. And I think our learning outcomes are getting to that point where we're getting similar targets for teaching. But I just think it could be a little more streamlined. And I really appreciate that, and I, I, uh, I think there are a lot of people who feel similarly. I think there are probably, I know there are many people who, you know, feel quite um, toward the opposite end of the spectrum and fearful of you know, the possibility of a kind of forced or mandated consolidation. So, you know, there remain a, a constellation of opinions, uh, but I think that what 
I'm encouraged by the fact that we were able to work through uh, what was a bruising conversation about you know many important things and uh, and take a decision essentially, um, even if it wasn't one that everyone was 100% um, behind or was 100% popular. Um, and I think that goes to Bill's point about unity of voice that it's not necessarily about um, you know, winning the day in any particular direction, but, you know, as long as we're, you know, we do have a sense that we are working together towards a common purpose, and hopefully it's a common purpose that's in the direction of making the school system better for kids all across the system, um, then, you know, I think we'll be in good shape. Um, so, yeah, and I just wanted to acknowledge what you're saying, but, um, but also just know that there is a kind of, um, a ray of light in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I feel very much the same way, and you know that, that you know that having been able to get to that consensus was right. so, at, at least yeah. for myself, really, really important, and that I, we were able to. I know that people felt differently about that we were not just putting attention on the kids, but I think that it's the other way around now. We are completely focused on. The, the urgency that kids can't wait. So we understand that all our schools are the same. So all of that we had done together, as gruesome as this process was, it has built, us, it has made us stronger. And from now on, I feel like you know I, I would like to. We always have to revisit the past and not make the same mistakes, obviously. But to to move forward, you know, together with that energy that that we have right now. And, continue to, to work together and not dwell too much on, mm -hmm. on what could happen. So we don't know what curveball they're going to throw us, so hopefully we will take that yeah. curveball forward all together, you know, mm -hmm. and just continue to, to work I, together. I, I, mean, I guess I would say, to, to add to that, that you know, we have our work cut out for us. Yes. Um, but I, I, I guess I'm optimistic because I feel like, you know, the that the, the boards all have, are committed to that work um, and understand kind of what it is in a sense. And I, I'm not sure that we, we had that before this process started. So. Committed to what work? When you say that work? Uh, committed to the work of figuring this out. Oh. Figuring out yeah. how yeah. we work together. And, and also understanding the... That, you know, and and being, being both proactive and uh, dogged mm -hmm. in pursuing those questions. So can, I guess this is what I would say, Lindy, and it's my perception. So I want to be I'm deliberately using that my. I'm not speaking for anyone. Um, my perception in my first three to four years here was that if you ask me how to classify the work of at least the supervisory union board and executive committee was one to talk a lot about things, but never really to make a, big, a controversial decision. Let me use that adjective. Maybe that's the best adjective. I, I, there's probably a better one that that's maybe too combative. <laughs> um, and um, we did a lot of studying things and study things and study things. So what I'm elated at, whether and I was pretty direct about what my opinion was on merging and not merging, but um, I'm just glad that there's a decision. And for me, that's big movement for the board. Because the habit, and I had heard about that habit before I came in as superintendent, but that had been a Washington Central habit for years. So that to me is movement of like, we're gonna make a decision. That we can work with. It's the, it's the indecision is actually a decision, and it's worse than either, if you think of it as three or four side or whatever side you want to think of it, it's worse than not making one one way or another because it just leaves ambiguity and it's like, what? And, and I think that consensus is the word that sort of described this board's journey from, from a very clear statement in support of consolidation to, um, uh, I would say at worst, reluctant um, and probably that's not even a fair way to describe it, uh, support of the report, uh, the, the consensus building work um, came a long way, you know, from the time that I was on the Act 46 study group to 
the delivery of the report, a lot of ground was covered. Um, and so, you know, speaking to, you know, what does this mean moving forward? It means that we are actually um, starting to find that one voice mm -hmm. that says, that acknowledges that our kids are all going to go to school together um, when they hit seventh grade and is, is finding genuine commonality and purpose. Um, and when you've got commonality and purpose, then you can start to really take apart uh, or maybe better put together <laughs> uh, what we're doing in the schools so that the kids all walk in the door ready to go. Uh, and that's the work that I hear you, all of us, wanting to continue. Um, and, you know, it has nothing to do with the AOE. It has everything to do with what we want for our children in our communities. Um, so that's incredibly positive to me. I think the other important thing is how much more educated a lot of our board members have become. And, like, we have learned a lot from each other but also has shown us, even when we had community members as part of the police committee, sharing with them things that they, they didn't know that they were actually happening, you know, that we had a strategic plan, that, you know, we had a for sure, like, they were not just community members, but also board members that were not really emerged in this, in this, in this work, even in the student learning outcomes, you know, like, a few that participated in that, and we adopted them, but we really, like, had to dive into it to be able to put the report forward. So, so that's also another thing that we can continue to do is continue to educate and inform, you know, because at carousel meetings and getting the huge agenda, we know that not everybody has the time to read the agenda, so how we continue that, you know, that pool of knowledge and information to keep, it is easier for board members to get them to make decisions when they're really, really informed, and it seems like this process has helped that. You know, I, I feel like a lot of people have dived in into getting more knowledge than before. Project-based learning. A project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful case in point. You just want to acknowledge your point, like yeah. your, your skepticism. Right. I think it's important because it, it mirrors the secretary's yeah. um, skepticism, which is that the rhetoric all sounds pretty good, um, but you know our actions are going to have to reflect our rhetoric. Because I don't see it. I mean, a yeah. huge no, I understand you. change. Mm -hmm. We have board meetings. We have some together. We have some separate. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the challenge. <laughs> Any more on Act 46? Moving on to board observations. So we had talked last month. I have nothing to share with you. <laughs> okay. We had talked yeah. about moving Maybe forward with this and right. it made it to the agenda. Right, so it made it to the agenda. So here's what I would propose, and I haven't even talked to my colleague over here, so she has all rights to give me a s to st stare at me or even to slap me upside the head or the <laughs> kick under the table. <laughs> but that I would suggest that on April, our April meeting, and she say, may say May, and she can please do that, Alicia, that we put together a student showcase of some sort for you. And that we bring the forms yeah. and we have you try it. Yeah. Scott, you've been through this. Mm -hmm. And that we try it, that afterwards kids leave, and we say thank you so very bring much. Kids. Yeah. Kids. Okay. And say that was great, that was awesome, or we film something at least, if that's where we need to go. Mm -hmm. And then we yes. talk about it and say, what did you, how did that go? What did you look for? What did you see? And then let's talk debrief. Yeah. And we're gonna do a little authentic learning about what did you see, what were you looking for? We would say that ahead of time before the kids were here. And we'll go over the student learning outcomes a little bit. We'll give you the, we'll give you all the posters in some form or another, and you can then try that, and then we debrief it afterwards. Would that be a way of getting into this? I would love to have yeah. kids. Yeah. Um, the only thing is, right now, our board meeting is scheduled for April break, and I'm. Hoping Thought it got changed to so the next Monday. Next Monday. The, should be. It's. I don't think we've officially changed yeah, it. Yeah, we will. But 
We will tonight. So and if that, yeah, and so you could, we could get back to you probably by in two weeks. What if, if that or the May, but somewhere there we have that calibration training that we do something it's together. Being the first day after April, so right? right? Yeah, it's, on it's, part of it's on May. It's on May. On May. Yeah, it's in May. Yeah, I haven't even seen yeah. one. Well, if it's from May, I couldn't print. It's the next thing on the agenda. It's the next thing on the agenda, so I don't know when I want to jump into that. But last year, I changed just March and April from the calendar. But last year, we had decided that to celebrate May should be the time when we celebrate accomplishments because it's towards the end of the year, yeah. through the year, and share with community and celebrate our staff and administrators. So maybe we could do what you said in April, yeah. and then maybe that we could, could do be something part else. of the accomplishments. We could do something more in May. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Great. Okay, so what should I So just the monitoring? Just say uh, uh, student observ board observation. Sorry, Darcy, I keep in, 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 in <laughs> <laughs> I like Let's give it your tongue. <laughs> so I can just look into it. Should I move somewhere, Darcy, so you can see me? No, no you're good. Uh, it's it's what? good. I, I'll just yeah, make him back every once in a while. Okay. I just catch this Change. out of the corner of my eye every so often. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> We just need to download it. You're right. <laughs> so we're saying the May meetings when we'd have kids come. No. No, April. April. Well, April. But we're talking about moving the April meeting. To the 23rd. To the I 23rd. thought we did at our last meeting. I think you did. Yeah, because I, I changed it, it that... and I erased it, and I thought we did. We'll check. Did we move Yeah. Oh, I think we did. I think we did. No, we talked about moving we it, did but there were too many. So the 23rd? There is another, was it the school start time meeting? Oh, there is. There's a we school. We talked about it. We talked about it, and it was. There is a school start time committee. Uh, yeah. Isn't that the presentation? March yes, 23rd is 6 to yep. It's the 3rd possible. 5.30 to 6.30. Yeah. yeah. So, and where is that? So, I, you I mean, we could move it later and start it. Seven. Seven. At, or or six thirty at U thirty two. Or six thirty at U thirty two. Um I will make it easier for community members that come. Mm. It'll be tricky for kids. I can keep kids with me here. Oh that's right. Yeah. That's it true. might be tricky to get them there. To Tuesday instead. Do would you like to go to Tuesday? <laughs> well that way it'll Do you not kids. have a board meeting? That I don't have a board meeting. I might have a class meeting, but I could ask my class to meet without me. Um, so April twenty fourth? Yeah. The 24th, would that work? Mm -hmm. That would work. That would actually be great in great. case 24th kids forget. Is, they'll have a that's what I was, that yeah. Monday after a yeah. vacation, to have them ready. <laughs> no, in the okay. Yeah. So April 24th, okay. 530, board meeting. Perfect. Thank you. At, at 530, you said? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to put it here. Can you pull up the U32 calendar? I can. Do you think it is? Uh... Could be. We can keep talking. Yeah. Okay. Should we move to the board calendar? No. Yes. Yeah, so you're trying to look something up while you're trying to yeah. present something. So That's not fair. March. <laughs> April 24th. Yeah. Oops. It's up here. Um. A lot of softball and baseball. There's no There's track. Else. track is on That's Wednesday that week. I know that because my daughter's here for a meet. Okay. Right. So, did we move to the next point? Um, we can right. move to board calendar. So I I couldn't make more copies because the copy of just was making it made. Four copies. Do you want to share okay. with? Do you want to share with? Because I have it here. Do you want to share with Stephen? Or, or if you do know. share, I'll give this to Alicia. Do you have another one? Oh, that's for you. Oh, that's for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to take wherever you could. Do we have enough now? I think we want okay. me to put it between the yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, take that. Well, no. Okay. Yeah. We can well, share. I need Floor to sit next to me and point the things anyway, so I point to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys like well, a copy? We have an extra. <laughs> oh, oh, we do. Yeah. Do you want a copy? But, so, what I did, I just changed the date. I changed yes, the date overall, 2018 to 2019. 
but the only the only thing I changed was March and April because I figured we would do uh, May June. So I hadn't changed the date there yet because that's I why it was seventeen. Yes. So that's exactly what we had in two thousand seventeen. Oh. So mm. I just thought you had a typo. I, I, I probably do. No, no, I'm not. Oh, 2017. <laughs> oh, okay. I just thought it was. Oh, no, no. I think that I left those 2017, so you knew that's exactly what we had there. I if we see. change it, I'll put 2018 now. Does okay. that make? Yeah. Okay. I did. I already did it. So <laughs> let, let's try to make it quick so it doesn't take two. So reorganize, we already did. And for our community on Act 36 programs, we did and informed our two members from next door communities, which is great. Uh, in that goal to long term planning, uh, quality committee, and monitor. I, I added that just because we're no, we involved in that work was, oh, like that right now. And then this was something okay. that you gave me last year, Stephen. Get data, quantitative and quantitative data, and it was in March. What is what does that mean for so this it year? Must be reports we were looking reports. for from the administrators. Yeah, yeah, so. Is Mark too it early? happened. It it well, happened right last year. What are you saying that this happened last year in this March? Qualitative and quantitative data. Well, we no, no we decided that that's March. where we wanted to have it. It didn't right. happen. Right. Then, it didn't happen. But we said that we were shooting yeah. for now. In the in, in the school quality yes. committee we have, we're saying we're shooting for April or May, most okay. likely May, yeah. for this for the principals to come back with what happened during the winter. Winter. So, I can share that with you in April. Mm -hmm. The well, winter we have to day. think about it as well. April is going to be that's more bringing all the students. I think it's more of a report than it is a presentation. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, the, in the first half of what we were going to do in May was have the students in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Already. So we've moved April. that to April, mm -hmm. so it might fit perfectly in May because mm -hmm. we just cleared up a big chunk of our May. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I had sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had left it as I two. Agree. So in May we also had some great accomplishments through the year. So do that in April. What you could do, I have a capital plan to share with you tonight, just where we're at. So you could move that to March. Okay. And then. Um, I just have an update to give you and some stuff to share with you. And then the qualitative and quantitative data, just swap places, those two. Yeah, and I, it may work for Alicia to be in April because of how late you are. This is some of the juggling that I do. We do it as a leadership team together. And so I've got to kind of think about across all the boards mm -hmm. on how we're doing this. And the leadership team they will hear next week, not this week for me on this, because we have two leadership team meetings in a row mm -hmm. that say, okay, and you guys have got to get ready. We've got to get the winter data put together and do an analysis of how many kids have we been able to help grow. Mm -hmm. And where, and when we haven't been able to do that faster than the rate at which they, we expect them to grow, mm -hmm. what, what do we know? And what, don't, what do we need to probe more? I think sure. that's what the thought was there that it gave yeah. time for the fall and winter, yeah. Yeah. particularly the fall yeah. results to get tabulated and then by March. Right, mm -hmm. right. We're trying to really get the winter ones, the January and say, so I just want to say, even though you may be ready, Alicia, I want to make sure we're yeah, coordinated nice. across all the schools. And it may be that you are on the 23rd because it's so late in the month. Mm -hmm. and, the, and someone like Stephen at yeah. D32 has the first Wednesday. He right. can't go into Like if I told Stephen yeah. right now for two weeks, he'd be like, what? <laughs> I'll do it, but, you know, what's the plan? <laughs> okay, so, so I'm clear and I'm changing the cut. I moved in. The whole facilities update and capital to, plan, you can move to tonight. I put it in tonight. Mm -hmm. And now in April... In in goal one, we have the trial board observations, mm -hmm. and on goal in long term planning, I'm going to move the get data, mm -hmm. right? And and then in May we're going to analyze it, or should I move the entire bullet analyzing details to make more decisions, depending on what works? Um, that was more budgeting. Well, the is the get data qualitative and quantitative on fiscal. Because I mean, that's what long-term no. planning has been. That's not no. what he, Stephen was. No, I know. So I'm just wondering if it's in the wrong world. Is it is it is in the wrong world? The reason I ask that shouldn't it be down in the educational yes. academic? Yes. In student outcomes. Yes. Okay. So sorry, I'm just moving. The data. Yeah. In the green. Okay. Yes. In the yeah. green. And those, I mean, 
that's going to well, be happening in April. I mean, they're they're a little intermingled, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, they're a little intermingled because the data that we get from the qualitative and quantitative right. yeah. analysis is going to drive <laughs> long-term fiscal planning. Right. Well, I would ask you uh, actually argue what you're going to be doing with students here in April is part of that qualitative review. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, the board, are doing instead of asking Alicia and I to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I put those together. I put get data and then review data and presentation from students and teachers there and on the communication is the trial board observations. Okay. And so moving to May, should I leave the celebrate accomplishments for the year and share with community? So can I, can I, I'm going to throw something in here and you guys can tell me I'm all crazy. Um, one of the things in talking to the executive committee about SU goals, supervisor union goals, is that um, we need, for lack of better words, alignment between the SU goals and the local board goals. They don't need to be the same. Mm -hmm. They don't need to be, and it doesn't mean that a local board can't have a, something else they'd like to do outside the SU. Um, but that's part of what, you know, this is the whole reason as the executive committee has talked from February, or actually before February, but February and March and they'll present some things next week and you'll be talking about them as an SU board and then bringing that and hopefully in June coming back with something that can be there. Mm -hmm. I think at the same time, East Montpelier should be talking about your goals. So I know that there's, I saw there's a retreat here on, we usually do that in the retreat and we move that back to June, mm -hmm. but some boards, Callis being one of them, I think Doty, we talked about this, I'm looking at Matthew. Um, and we did talk about it at Berlin, the Berlin's gonna start in April about let's start Relooking at our goals right now, so because they're, we're seeing this work coming, so that we get into June, we have a good discussion about how, where are we aligned, where are we different, how are we working together, that whole piece of that unity of voice. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that things can't be the same, or they have to be different, or they must be the same. Mm -hmm. But that some of that discussion happening, um, because that's what I would say via. I would have you swap the yeah. May. To the because June's going to be a carousel meeting, yeah. So that if you wanted to look at some of the long range planning pieces fiscally, Lori could come and give you right. some of that. Okay. And, and we already have since the budget's been adopted, the multi year budget packets that you see, mm -hmm. I could give I, I could ask Lori for those to be produced in a week and a half, and she'd have them done because now we know. And then it's just put, it's just multiplying based on indicators that we take mm -hmm. for energy and other things. So when is it going make sense to... it may considering the legislative actions mm -hmm. going this year it might make even more sense to put it off till June. I mean for me what I want to see for data to begin doing long term budgeting is our current budget, what however many years, the next three years what a level services budget looks like for the next three years, which we can do. Yeah. And then um, based on current legislation, which could change, are there any caps that we need to worry about? Um, the per pupils, you know, all the uh, nuances of what we know right now helps us plan two, three years ahead of time to say, you know what, three years down the road, this is what a level funded budget would cost us. And we know with these current requirements, it's gonna put us $1,000 per pupil under, and looks like we're headed in a great direction and let's go there, or mm -hmm. it looks like in three years, we're in a world of mm -hmm. stuff. And what can we do now, mm -hmm. knowing that is mm -hmm. potentially coming in three years Let's make decisions over the next two years that help mitigate that yeah. so that we don't just kick the can down the road for like our legislature does. <laughs> um, get that in the camera. Get that on the camera. Yeah, I was going to say, did that get on ARCA? Make, make decisions. Make that feel 9 11? Yeah. Does that reveal my bias? <laughs> We're just talking about making a GIF out of that. <laughs> I, I just have a question. I, I'm just remembering this, and I might be wrong, but 
when we moved it to May, looking and analyzing that stuff, it was because we don't meet in July. And right. what we talked about was that if we got that stuff and we didn't meet, we, we didn't have time to afterwards come back in. And if we, we don't meet a lot, so I was just Whatever. wanting to yeah. bring that back up because otherwise we get all the information, mm -hmm. we get the presentation and we're kind of analyzing there, but then we don't get mm -hmm. that second, that's, yeah, that's why we had to, meeting, on to right. reflect on it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so just that on when we go over recruit schedule, retreat. could we, when retreat. they say retreat schedule? But, um, so it, it should be scheduled retreat, but I just wanted to make sure retreat. that we schedule that. That might inform what we do annually at a retreat. Yeah. So the retreat could be we get the information in June and then end of July, beginning of August, mm -hmm. we have our retreat, we've had a month to digest it, mm -hmm. and that's what the retreat focuses yeah. on. Sure. Okay. Yeah. On this idea. is what we see. This is what we see coming down the road, and, and in many ways, it helps. In it, it helps inform our goals moving forward. Not that this is what we want to do in October. This is what we see three years from now. So how are we going to get from where we are now to where we need for three years to now, and use that retreat to help do some of that long-term planning when we're not pressured with. You know, uh, passing the board orders and you know, all the minutiae that day to day stuff. Of our time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you said some good things there for actually maybe changing the multi-year projection and less of the way we've been doing it. I, as you all know, I will. I, it's been okay, but I'd like it to be better. And just what Stephen said there, I think mm -hmm. I captured it all just to say more of a projection of the big parameters, less of the individuals, mm -hmm. and then. Um, if we took the NESDAQ enrollment projections along with mm -hmm. a level uh, service budget with what we know, and then what's that do for excess spending, what's it look like three years out, what's that look like for tax rates. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of assumptions in there, but at least gives you an idea of what mm -hmm. the bounds are. Mm -hmm. And that's actually an easier report to do than what we've been doing. So, so remind me where we stand on the new software and how will that impact how quickly Lori can do some of this stuff in the future? Um, so the, it won't do this analysis going forward. New software won't help us that. That's, that's analysis that we have to run ourselves. Okay. But it will help a lot with tracking. And um, the software, one of the versions that we've seen has a dashboard that basically board members can get a real-time report of like, where are we compared to the budget? If you want to have all that information or not. I mean. Okay. And principals will have it, and you know, it's one of those ways of just a lot more elegant data tracking. But it's more of that does more of tracking and will help us build the budget for the next year, but not three years out. Gotcha. It'll still be a manual. Type. It'll be a report. I mean, it's a bunch of, it's really, Lori, once Lori's built the Excel sheets, they aren't that hard from there. It's the initial build that's hard. Gotcha. Okay. And so a lot of this we already have built in sheets. For me, it's, just the way Stephen asked those questions, if the board likes those questions that he was asking, that to me is more of a narrative report. With here's a couple of graphs, but here what they say, here's what they say to me as your superintendent presenting them to you. Do you agree with my analysis or not? And how does that help you as a board make informed decisions? Instead of the th the multi-year budget that we give you now is frankly it's all coming out of Excel, and it's all just a bunch of factors that go in there for our best projections of where we're going for spending. Mm -hmm. What I heard from Stephen was like, let's take a step up another level and not so much about the minutia about the functions, but tell me about where we are going to be as a, as a town for tax rates. Tell me how we're going to do an excess spending. What's it look like with enrollment projections? I don't need to know like how much money you're going to spend on energy right now. I need to know, are we going to be inside the limit or are we going to be pushing up against the threshold? And we might have to think about where do we cut to stay within it, servicing the same kids. Is that what you were yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. So that we can, it's not November and right. we have to yeah. cut $75,000 mm -hmm. in right. 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 Yeah. If I know three years ahead of time, we're going to, where the level funded is going to put us 75 over. Right. In my mind, it's easier to right. 
to know that and decide a sequence of decisions right. or how we're going to ease and into if, it or wh whatever right. it is. And if that's June versus May, because you can never predict when the legislature is going to end, they're usually going to end mm -hmm. somewhere in May. Mm -hmm. In June, it's easy for us to say, hey, they tweaked the excess spending threshold. Like right now, I can tell you for the next four years out what the limits are on the excess spending threshold. Assuming consumer price index. That's the only assumption mm -hmm. I have to make. Right, right. You kind of go on. The rest of it, it's a calculation. It's mm -hmm. just some fancy Excel formulas. So what I did is I changed. I said at the end of those two bullets, I said reflect on this information at the retreat. Right. You it's okay with me. To, yeah, it's it's okay. Others. Yeah, yeah. It's and, great with me. I oh. think these are all great suggestions. And then that brings me to, so we, on, on June we said schedule a retreat time. Do we want to schedule that in June? Do we want to schedule it before? It brings me to another point, and I'll take advantage since Matt is here today. I'm just going to email you about this. It's about maybe having a, a full board retreat. And the idea Ooh, that big. I had for the full board retreat, even though I brought this up to Bill before, was on bias training. But now I'm thinking that we should all watch. It would be easy. We will all watch the movie Resilience together. I went mm -hmm. to see it yesterday. And yeah, I heard you were there. was there. And I think. I think that it would be, especially as a retreat, it would be, it would be great. It would be a way to either even celebrate or remember. You know, it's just like a get together, mm -hmm. watch the movie, and, and that would be an easy thing that we could do yeah. together. That doesn't need a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. Well, I would. We I, the movie. <laughs> yeah, no, I would bring actually bring Dave Melnick in to do a little talk to us about that. Yeah. I mean, that would be a well, well worth it. And to say in June, a month where we only have a carousel meeting. To do that would be a, a good piece about how we servicing our kids that are most vulnerable. Yeah, and it will inform our budget too. Right. It would put the resources where we need the resources yeah. to like good thinking. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Good note. <laughs> I just want to note that I am not yet the chairman. Well, but. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, well, you're going to be the meeting chairman. Yeah. <laughs> I will bring no, forward the Eastmont Billiard. Well, it's, well I, and I don't see it as Eastmont Billiard. I think this is brother. This is what we're talking about. Is is kids? I see it from the from a, from best outcomes for all kids. Mm -hmm. if, if we are are all informed, if we can help even in your interactions in the hallway. Mm -hmm. It's true. I, think it's really, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen the film. I've heard it's very powerful. I, it is I know really it's about, good. And there, there's a small YouTube talk that Dr. Harris has, mm -hmm. too, that is mm -hmm. much smaller. Yeah. And, and it's pretty much it's that good. You just need to start Googling. Good. You can get a lot. You can get a lot. But, but it's completely, I think it would be total, especially because the entire state is involved in this work in Washington Central. Mm -hmm. done. You've done all of the school boards, all of the staff, staff has yeah. watched it at every building. So it would be good to support that work mm -hmm. as board members. And having Dave come in and have Dave. Yeah, we just have to see if we can get Dave's schedule. Yeah. Okay. Go. Any more on board calendar? I I think if we take it through June today would be I don't know what our timing is and then mm -hmm. our next meeting we continue through August or do you think we should keep? I would I, I would wait till after we get through the full board discussion. Yeah, on yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. But I would suggest in April this is a topic for us to continue because it helps me a great deal and I think it helps mm -hmm. Alicia too if we know mm -hmm. the board topics uh, mm -hmm. for the year and it'll actually help some of that coordination of working together across boards. Okay. And can I say one more thing? Yes. Can I say one more thing? Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, anything here? Quantitative data, tier two. Mm -hmm. Specific. Mm -hmm. um, I think we felt comfortable continuing to, to um, to champion that to the community, mm -hmm. um, but good solid quantitative mm -hmm. data on it. So, particularly information around the improvements in the gap uh, between free and reduced lunch and non-free and reduced those kinds of things. Yeah. At least whatever's available, that to to me becomes really meaningful to say, yes, we are saying that it's it's making improvements, and here's where you can see it's mm -hmm. making improvements. Mm -hmm. Because we we brought the spending, we increased the spending, mm -hmm. right? Um, which I, I I was comfortable doing. You know, I don't ever like to increase spending. So, 
Um, which is, yes. I, I don't want to say ever, but I'm fiscally. I'm happy to anyway. bring what we have. The other thing that, that really shed light to that was, so we're taking SBAC later this year than we have mm -hmm. in the past. We're not taking it until May. Um, but so most likely that data won't be back for this That's meeting. Right. But in the fall no, is when no, I'm we... Thinking, I've been thinking that it was just going to be using the STAR 360. Yeah, and I, we have and all And we that. have all that, and we have it against the, the normal yeah. growth the normal growth rates that are set nationally on the yeah. normal curve. I don't mean normal as in regular, but normal curve equivalents. Right. Um, that I'm talking to her in educational right. leaves right now. Right. Um, and that's why I said we, literally that's what I thought we'd bring back yeah. and then what are the growth rates for those kids that have been tier two? We have all of that on our data wall for winter assessments right now. So that that's very easy to share. Okay. I believe that brings us to and one last thing, the only thing I added in your April calendar, I'll email this to you without editing, just, what is that, what am I supposed to do, just share, right? What did I, the last time I shared it and they could edit it, so I'm supposed to just send it as a PDF. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, a PDF. So, it is, I added, the, there's that training that I mentioned at the government, the community engagement training. You know, yeah, and I don't know if you saw, I sent that out today again. sent it out today, to all board so members. in case, Sorry. the one on vacation, Saturday. <laughs> Before you go on vacation, I'm, no, I'm, sorry. <laughs> just, I'm out of here. I stayed for February no, break. I'm out of here. <laughs> I just thought I mentioned it, so that's, so I added it in your calendar in case you're so inclined. And on Bill's, he provided some guilt information on who's already going to. I did. Oh, you mm -hmm. did. I haven't signed up, but I'm, I guilt the rest of us. I actually have to confess, I'm not. Oh, I think oh. you were. I was, but I didn't realize it was the Saturday. Uh, He's on break too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will put in a shameless plug to the group that working with the public agenda is going to be here with quite a bit of the work of the um, gentleman from my, Matthew Litkinger. I always have a hard time with his last name, but a major part of my lit review. So um, they've done some. They look awesome. They have some promising work. They need yeah. a little more research analysis. And that's what I hope to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four four resolution in support of taking action to better regulate access to firearms. And we talked about this on Saturday in our forum. We talked about it briefly again on uh, town meeting day. Um, and this, I think it would be fair to say the community members that were there and made comments on town meeting day it was strongly in support yep. of the resolution. I, I'd just like to inform you that U32 and it's under Scott's authorship, so it's nice that he's here, um, added a phrase at the end after some debate. They have took the Montpelier resolution and then added it and passed it and sent it on to the governor and all of the, our local representatives and senators and the secretary of education. And the last sentence they added at the bottom after, it's a separate paragraph on the sentence. And I think this applies to elementary students. We recognize and honor the activism of our students, the healthy diversity of opinion among them, and the civility of their debates. And that's, that's happening. And there's quite a bit of, while uh, Stephen and Flora and I were talking before the meeting about, is that really applicable to elementary school? And I believe it is. But is it applicable to this resolution, is what I'm wondering. That's for your decision, because as I've said before, I think you've all heard me say before, resolution is opinion of the board. Right. And I, I've been, you I haven't even heard me say that, but I've been championing this all over the place because I've talked to my superintendents. That's what, that's like, that's exactly what we're talking about for me. So could you read the sentence again? Yeah, we recognize and honor the activism of our students, the healthy diversity of opinion among them, and the civility of their debates. So I look at Alicia and say, does any of that happen here relative to currently? With current, no. We. It actually surprised me. I had one parent call me to ask if there was any talk among students. I met with the staff. Um, 
after you met on that Saturday. So right after break, I met with them prior to the March 14th, and then we ended up having a snow day. Yeah, um, good. But, um, and just to tell them, if, if you're hearing any kids talk about it, let me know, and we want to have healthy conversations, and not a single student in this building mm -hmm. brought it up that any adult was aware of. So with this issue right now, no. Okay. And I don't disagree that we support that at all mm -hmm. in whatever grade level. I want children to have a civic mm -hmm. voice, and I, I just didn't see how it related to this it's was what I was asking. Part, most, right. most of my pieces, I'm just proud of. I'm really, and I, it's one of the most yes. proud moments I've had in education of our students at U32 and the ones that are leading this, and they're yeah. being extremely respectful yeah. of each other. I, I just like, that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I will yes. offer as well yeah. Yeah. that you modeled exactly the behavior in the letter that you sent that we're asking for our students to do. And that's really important because at the end of the day, our job is to lead by example. I don't and even remember which letter. Sorry, no, that was that was Stevens. 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 Sorry, it Stevens. Was really, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. I have to thank you. Yes. Stevens' letter yes. was amazing. Yeah. amazing. Could you forward that to me? Um, yes. Yeah. I have to find I, it. I, I, Stephen, thanks. Um, I, I must have gotten it because I'm the parent of a high school oh, student. Oh, yeah. Because so, yeah. yeah. we have a Stephen um, sitting here. I know we're not right. talking about him. So yeah, I'm that was, I mean, that's the since about the 14th or 15th, since about this week after the shooting, that's been our plan. It's been mm -hmm. like, and unless the students bring it up, Right. Mm -hmm. One, we have to be. We don't have a choice as educators. But two, if they if they figure it out, they get our support. Mm -hmm. So, question: Do you, so after Sandy Hook, did the conversation was the conversation more active here because In the student not, body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know? No. Okay. Yeah. I think the the older kids do talk about it, but they're very supportive of each other because there's a big variety of, they don't want to offend their, mm -hmm. their, you know, there's a lot of hunters in our school and they, I, I think their opinions are still developing and they don't, they don't want to stand out, but I don't think any of them, it's being for my own child, I think he felt like, you know, it, there was not going to be a group going, you know, just the way, going out. So interesting from, from, from the school. So. I wonder if there is conversations happening that the, the teachers just aren't here or the staff just isn't here. The reason I say that is, interestingly enough, Addison this morning, I had the news on for a minute, which I try not to. <laughs> and um, it, the bombings that have oh, happened in Austin, Austin, Austin was on the news. And she very clearly said, it's okay, we're safe. Mm -hmm. So... It, it was we do. Inch. I mean, we, we do talk about right. safety, safety, certainly, yeah. and we do our drills. And I don't know if all of you saw. I'm sure Lindy and Stephen did not. I wrote a long letter to families in the last newsletter. I saw kind of. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Just about, you know, we don't want to make a big thing about it, and we also have to be right. very careful. And what I tell students a lot is what your parents, right, what you talk about at home and what, what is shared in your home may not look the same as in another's and some parents may not want their children to know about some things that you may know about. Um, just in general safety or exposing kids to things, mm -hmm. not in light of this. Um, but we, we do practice our drills and, you know, kids do know that, you know, we had two police officers here last week interviewing us. I mean, they see, and, and we make sure to let them know that they are safe. Um, so that's interesting she yeah. said that. Well, yeah. our news, our national, well, at our local news, they just show way too much graphic. The whole time they, you know, anything comes on about Parkland and they're talking about how great it is the kids are protesting. In the background behind the person doing the news is the kids running out crazily from the school, scared to death as they should be, instead of focused on what the story is about the activism and going to the state house, they just keep replaying those reels. And even the thing at Montpelier High School. Mm -hmm. yep. They didn't tell you they were going to show the guy get shot and fall on the ground on the news. And I watched local news thinking it's kind of safe. But I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. I, I want to know about what's going on in the world, but I don't need to see a videotape of somebody being shot. 
So I think that adds to some of the trauma if the TV's running 24-7 with these visuals and the noise and the... Well, it's interesting because we tend to not watch the news because of that, mm -hmm. but it was interesting that I let it play a little bit longer because of the conversation she that she was talking, because of what she was saying. And I can't remember exactly because I was half asleep, but... The, the, <laughs> it was... the, the letter that Stephen sent, it... Because we had community members ask us in a yeah. uh, town meeting yeah. and we mm -hmm. wanted to make sure. So I immediately sent it to Andy Shapiro and Caroline because I knew they would distribute oh, that's it. Because funny. I did too. <laughs> you did too. And, and he wrote immediately, Can I have his email? This is really well said. I will thank him for that and I'll tell my group to not show up at U32 because they were planning, they are part of the organizers and they were planning to go to support. And immediately, as he knew, he was like, This is great. The students are mm -hmm. going to do what mm -hmm. they need to do. And yeah. Mm -hmm. so, we're, we're, yeah, that is really well done. Because it, it was somewhat misrepresented at town meeting. I went back and read Rebecca's letter, and she was, not saying, she was not saying, it, do it, not let do students that, right? no. yeah, have us. It, it was not, and that's how it, it came across at town meeting, that an e a letter from sure. the superintendent and the AOE was right. saying that we don't support this, yeah. and that was not... It made me go reread her letter and stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, that that was not my read either, and I I had an exchange with a community member, covering the same ground, mm -hmm. saying it's you know my my read of it is different. Mm -hmm. My read is that this is asking the, um, the principals administrators to do the right thing by the students, not. Um, not to discourage them. Squash from, civil disobedience right. or yeah. civil yeah. Un, whatever. Well, you it's, a, it's a, it, was a it, it was a delicate line yeah. to walk for sure in the memo. But so the conversation amongst the leadership team, because the memo, you know, the letter you referenced that you put in your newsletter, that was done with talk across principles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Stevens was, and it's hard when the boards have given us the mission you've given us. Mm -hmm. You've asked us to teach kids to be civically active. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Told us to. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to support. Right. Mm -hmm. So while we're on this topic, right? <laughs> yeah, after being one of the ones who <laughs> went over commas and <laughs> while we're on this topic, I would make um, what for me has been a kind of personal reflection, um, and I think a board is the place to share it. Personally, as a board member. Um, and it happened probably a week or so after the more recent one. So I suppose I'm projecting this on all our boards, but for me as a board member, I felt feel like we've been deficient in RSU on addressing school safety. I can't think of a single discussion board-wise about school safety. And after all these shootings now, I'm, I, I'm beginning to, you know, and, and this is nice. A resolution is nice. It's nice. Um, we're school board. I'm a school mm -hmm. board member. I shouldn't be doing nice things. I should be like, we need to figure out how to make sure our schools are safe. And I think we need to, I, I'm going to devote more time to it so I can tell you all to be prepared. <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, we talk safety is paramount, but we spend virtually none of our board time on school safety. But I, I, I want to spend more of yes, our board yeah, time yeah. on school safety. I'll put but, it that way. I won't say. But no, for you to feel better is that we did, you know, I don't know exactly what happened at each individual's school. But we took that very seriously through our uh, redoing, uh, passing the renovation, the construction. construction. Every mm -hmm. decision we made yeah. from closing yes. to spending more money closing the exterior doors, the to, you house. should have know how much time we spend back and forth with community members. And Bill will, and Alicia will remember this about just being able to get bossed in, you know, mm -hmm. like having that mm -hmm. conversation. So, mm -hmm. so there was a lot. And then the cameras came in. The camera since renovation, back. I would agree with you. Yeah, up but since renovation, we have not. And, yeah. and since then, I would absolutely agree. We've not talked about it. Mm -hmm. We, I would say, all of our buildings um, are doing very well against uh, with recommendations from the Vermont Crisis Plan. 
we have two that could use more updates than the other four. And that will take some construction at those two schools. Mm -hmm. And some, you know, will have to really affect their entryways. Well, my, am I monopolizing time? No. My view on it is on s safety issues. It's always a balance between safety and accessibility. Mm -hmm. So I think as boards, that should be a big chunk of what we're talking about. So that if the boards and the communities value access, I feel like it's our responsibility to say we understand what that is, to provide that these are the, the benefits and these are the risks. And you know, I, I just, I, I, th I think it's a valuable thing for us as boards to have to inform, help inform our administrators, just like budgets. Here's our priorities. Mm -hmm. And if, so if school safety is the priority, then it changes things. You know, uh, and I'll use an extreme, a massive extreme. You've got a buzz to get in, but it's not a glass door. It's a steel door mm -hmm. with no windows, or and it's bulletproof. bulletproof. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, talked about so that. that, and that's I'm using an extreme mm -hmm. intentionally, but you know, where do we fall on that spectrum mm -hmm. as a board and as a community on how we approach that? And I'm not trying to suggest any particular direction. I'm just suggesting. Discussion. I think it's a discussion. Mm -hmm that we've reached the point that we should have in our community. It's the only phone call I've had as a board member mm -hmm. was a few weeks ago. Hmm. Because, again, personally, I'm more interested in prevention mm -hmm. than I am on reaction, mm -hmm. how do we react. And I, and I, I know there's cameras, and I, I know there's process, um, and I know there's training, but I, I'm really interested in exploring proactive, and and some of the things. This, that's why this resolution is nice. Some of that's what some of this discusses mm -hmm. on proactive things to do. So anyway, I and, stood and on the bean stand for a minute. And, and, and then the other side of the pendulum is like you know we like Bill explained in his letter to when you sent something out to us too is that you know we're as as schools besides building the the walls in the prison were working really into getting to know every child and knowing, so trying to figure out a way that we're holding every child hold, it, hold, not hold, hold, so that we are preventing the bullying, we're preventing, we're understanding what is going on at home, we're taking care of their family, you know, we're not doing all of that completely, but that's the, to me, that's the other side where this leads. It's like, right. you know, that's where I want my resources to before the steel door. But, uh, <laughs> but, I, but I, know, I know that that was an extreme. But I was just so, Ruben, may I suggest that you and I kind of put that on a future agenda planning yep. topic and we could tackle that? Yes. Sometime by September or October, at least for East Montpelier. I would take that as an excellent suggestion. Okay. Okay, so um, we do have a resolution. I we had a fair amount of discussion, but we haven't actually got a, a motion or a second. Yeah. Um, are we there? Yeah. Do we? Would we like to? Mm -hmm. Wait, are we there? Yeah, we approve the resolution as. Oh, well, that's in the it's, action it's in the agenda. agenda. So yeah. We're in the discussion. Yeah. And then do we well, action. I always get confused as to what the discussion, and then we have an, another discussion mm -hmm. when we. Where we adopt it, that's right. the action. But I think Correct. we can move to the action. Well, Can't we are not. No. I guess I would more. still like to talk about that line. I mean, whether or not we're having those conversations, I wouldn't be opposed to adding it to this resolution. I liked the wording of that line. Yeah, I'm. I'm not opposed to it. I. Can you read it one more time? Uh, yes, once I get my computer awake. <laughs> <laughs> The, the only piece about it that um, I don't feel like it's particularly applicable to 
um, to what I've heard is happening in the school and the conversations in at, at this age of kids. Um, and we discussed this a bit on Saturday and then a, a little further on Tuesday without that additional language. So for me, I, I would be more comfortable, and this is only my opinion, I'm not trying to, mm -hmm. uh, but I would be more comfortable with um, adopting the resolution as we sort of uh, picked it apart a little bit on, on Saturday and Tuesday. A little bit? <laughs> um, that's that's as fine. As we picked I just... it apart on Saturday and Tuesday, <laughs> um, more so Saturday. Um, I, I don't feel like that additional language really adds value um, for, uh, for this board's statement. I agree with you. Just to summarize, I guess. Mm -hmm. Did you want to check that? your motion okay. for this okay. resolution? Did you get the language up just so that we... I doesn't can include, do it, but I doesn't include, 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 include Bill's language. language. Include, okay. This is resolution is in front of us. Okay. Yeah. I, I, just, yeah, I don't want to override or overrule, but the, no. this was my too many words of an opinion. <laughs> is there any further discussion of this resolution? Seeing none, I will say all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have adopted the resolution. Thank you. May I ask a process question? Will you please sign one of them? Mm -hmm. And would you like us to forward them to all the folks that we forwarded it to from the U32, mm -hmm. which was the governor yes, of yes. the legislatures, the chair of, of the House Judiciary, the Senate Judiciary, the Senate Ed, House Ed, mm -hmm. and the Secretary of Education? Yes, I would be if you comfortable to request one and that. Pass that to me, I will. Make sure that happens. Okay, reports to the board, 5.1 administration. I just have two things to share with you. Um, and you'll get a full regular report next week. Um, I have a story to share with you. My oldest son, Aiden, is 20, and for three years of his high school experience at U32, he mentored a student here when he was in kindergarten, first and second grade. Then Aiden graduated, and the student needed another mentor. And he got one from um, the community, and his mentor is John Holler, who is the mayor of Montpelier. And he called me on Friday afternoon. So he's been mentoring him for about a year. The student is in fourth grade now. And he said, I have this really cool experience. I'm wondering if you would mind me coming to your school on Monday with a good friend of mine who's a local author from Middlesex um, and WCAX. And I said, can you tell me what this is about? And he said that he made a deal with his student who is a jock. He loves sports. He plays three different sports. He hates to read. Um, he's very good in math, but he will adamantly tell you he hates to read. And so John said to him, I'll make a deal with you if you read three of, um, Todd Olson is the author. If you read three of his books, I will introduce you to him and you can meet him. So oh, yeah. the student said, yes, he was up for the challenge. Um, and he read the three chapter books, one of them being on the DCF book list this year. And so WCAX came today at lunch and Todd Olson and John Holler and both of both of the little boy's parents. And we met in, in here in the library. They did an extensive interview with this student had him and Todd meet for the first time and talk back and forth and with the mayor and it was so cool. So um, on Thursday night, I think WCX, um, Kristen said that she would let me know for sure, but I think he will be on TV, which is a very big deal for this kid. 
So while Todd was here, just so happens that our book club, which meets every month, um, four through six book club, is reading one of his books, and tomorrow night is the book club. So Todd is coming back to meet with all of the kids, and they don't know this. So I thought that was just a very it just. So I was I was texting Aiden today, sending him pictures. I'm like, look who's here, meeting with WCAX, and it was the student. It was very cool. So that was just my little nice story of something that happens here every once in a while. Um, and then the only other thing I have to share tonight is um, Todd and I sat down for a long time over the fall, and I think there, there should be six. Oh, I only kind of thought, but just keep going, we'll see. Um, there should be. Um, so we drafted a um, uh, capital plan based on what U32 kind of the format that they use. We sent it on to, I know it's it's a little, it's a little font, um, but I just wanted to, just so that you know we have um, at least the workings um, of a capital plan. We sent it to Bill Ford and had him fill in some of the missing pieces. So what Todd and I came up with were with the, the description column. So we have buildings and grounds. Um, we have really the maintenance piece and the custodial equipment. Um, so all of our furniture is in here. All of our systems are in here. Um, what Bill did for us is he really, the life expectancies that we didn't know he filled in those blanks for us, as well as the present work, um, because he had intimate knowledge with all of that. So Bill Ford was our clerk of the works so when we did the building project a number of years ago, and I think he's been employed by WCSU ever since. Uh, yeah, it's yes. continually he's doing the summer work for Rody, um, uh, Romney, Doty, and Callis this summer. It's about a half million dollars worth of work. He did. He did Berlin. the Romney project. He did the Berlin project. So he did the basketball floors and lockers at U32. So, so we've kept him busy. Um, but I just wanted you to have this. There's. We don't need to go over any of it in detail. Um, but it's it's not an exhaustive list, and it's not 100 percent by any means. But um, we have. I think we have at least all of the, everything that's here that needs to be replaced eventually is on these lists. So the obvious question is, how are we doing? <laughs> so we haven't, we haven't had, we were waiting for this to get to a point. You see those okay. couple cells that are still yellow. Yeah, I, yeah. And then Lori, Alicia, and I were already saying, we just <laughs> track it out. We're going to start programming it out. It, if you look, um, 510, you know, there's really nothing. And we've been telling mm -hmm. you that the roof right. was the big five year project, which we had done last summer. So if you look out another 10 years from today's date, is where things start to need to be replaced. Um, big ticket items. And I mean, you should hold our feet to the fire and say, hey, we don't want to find out in November what the yearly capital you should be telling us that in September or October. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Can, can I ask one, and I'm just, I don't know why the hand dryer stood out at me, but. <laughs> it's one that did to me too. Well, that's um, the bathrooms. But just when, so if something was put in in 2015 and it has a lifespan of five to seven years, if you could use the five year as the target replacement, mm -hmm. because I would rather have the money sooner or at least make an informed decision to, play the odds by a year mm -hmm. than if the lifespan is five to seven and we're only planning on the expense in year seven, mm -hmm. then potentially we're expensing that sooner than we would like or than yeah. we're planning to. Yeah. That's that's the only ask. Well, that's the first ask that I have. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything else. <laughs> the type of stuff for me that begins to inform yes. planning for budgets in the right. future yeah. and making informed decisions. So for instance, you know, if if those dryers go five to seven years, it's five years, they seem to be all right, but we know in another year we've got a half million dollars worth and we've got the money this year, maybe it makes yeah. sense to 
even though they're not broke yet, maybe, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or the new it, ones it are more efficient. Let's just look at things. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just more information. Yeah. And my assumption is the life expectancy is from the year purchase, not from here. The year, from the year of purchase, yes. Yeah, yes. right, yeah, correct. I yeah, think yes. that, was, that was the way I read it. So that one was in the 2022 call, yeah, really seven, seven years out from 2015. Yeah, it was just... It is. This is like a five years out is also, right, so that one actually should yeah. be in 2020. Yeah, this is fantastic. I mean, we... It's all in boxes, everything you'll ever need, but we knew we needed to get it on here. Right. And so that was our mission this winter. Um, and I felt like now is a good time. There And there are details to work out. There are little, you know, still some blanks and places so we have to get numbers. But um, rather than, because this, Todd and I did this actually at the end. Of, I looked at my email November 28th, and I, it's just not felt like the right time, so many other things. But I wanted to share it with you sooner than later. Even if you're off by 10%. It's still 90% right, and that's yeah. a lot closer than we've been before. Yeah. Um, and then just to give you a quick facilities update, um, we've not touched the capital money at all, but there's a couple of things coming up. We had, um, there's three things really. RH Associates came to look at all of our, so just the hardware on the doors, some things are starting to wear. So we had them go through the building with Todd and look at, um, uh, an example is in the old art room, the whole back wall, they were cupboard doors. We didn't replace any of those. They're falling apart. They were kind of falling apart six years ago, but we knew that we didn't need to do them. So they gave us a quote on what it would take to, to do some work in the building. Um, it's about $4,000. The other thing is Todd just about had a nervous breakdown in the last snowstorm, and I feel terrible for him. The um, tractor blew up about an hour into clearing all of that snow, and it turned into a 10-hour job for him to try to fix, find the parts for it, fix it, and then remove the snow so that we could come to school on Thursday. We talked about um, a backup plan. We, we have no snow blower here. We only have the tractor. And I said, Todd, that you know, that's a very easy backup plan. You, we can't be in this situation again. Um, so he, I told him to start pricing some snow blowers, and he said between one and two thousand dollars for a good snow blower to at least get us in the building right, in the case of another snowstorm. And then the last thing that we talked about, we have the Zender units in all of the classrooms that Andy Shapiro had designed, and he, they're starting to need some parts replaced, and his recommendation would be to purchase one Zender unit to keep on hand so that he can swap it out and then take the, mm -hmm. the one that's not working out to repair it, um, which would be much more efficient than what we're actually doing right now. So I told him I would just give you this update and let you know that it's about eleven thousand dollars for all the between the RH associates, the Zender and the snowblower. That um, I would like to ask if for you to discuss or let us know if, if those could come out of capital. Well, can so you the, just tell the, me what? Sorry. Well, I, I just noticed the Zender say that they have a fifteen to twenty year lifespan. So all your handling units do, and they go. I can tell you from experience, like at U32, everything is starting to fail right now. We're seeing some of that, but some go early. It's it's the different parts within them. And it's not what, the whole unit. It's not the whole unit. And so what Alicia's talking about is taking a, having a spare unit. Mm -hmm. We have this in other places. We have it in technology all over the place. If we walked into that closet behind you, Linda, you'd find some spare units. Mm -hmm. You put it in, you take the broken one out, you get a part to fix it, right? And it means you keeps you you moving. You do going. the same thing with IT. You've got right. to that's what I'm talking about. Swap the busted one out, and then you take the, the other one in the downtime yeah. and fix it. I mean, U32's Thanks. renovation was. 15 plus years right, ago. Right, but, so. but yeah. I can The unit itself yeah. is not unit going. Is the unit doesn't yeah. need to be replaced. It's more like a blower fan might go on right. it or something that makes it not work. Then you have to wait for the part that you, or, like we don't have yeah. all these parts on right. hand. So it's, yes. then then there's a classroom that doesn't unit. have one in yeah. operation yeah. for a while. And the reason we're coming to you, because we didn't talk ahead of time on this, um, really the Zender and the, um, our associates would come out of the can come out of the Sorry. 
capital plan, it would be nice to have all of it and you have control over the, you're the ones who authorize the capital right. plan. We could probably go into the budget and find these things, but. Mm -hmm. Well, we purchased the freezer this year out of budget, yeah. Yeah. which was a very high cost um, for our mm -hmm. budget. <laughs> yeah. Um, we didn't go to capital for that, which was absolutely fine, but our operating budget in, in no, the facility right. right now is. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a couple of furniture things that we're going to bring up late for, for next year. For next year. It, just yeah. to ask the question, does it make sense to add more equipment or would it make sense to have somebody on container for that once in a while? Sorry that, to have what? To have, to have a landscaping company on retainer for the well, once so a year. Well, so we where do not actually yeah. plow. Yeah. We have a, we, this is the sidewalk. We have somebody right. who plows, yes. And he doesn't have the, so we use He doesn't have the equipment He to, cannot do sidewalks, no. He okay. doesn't have, so I even said to Bill, could we like rent something from U32 in case of an emergency? What, it's, um, we need a plan B for sidewalks and, and the entry ways because okay. that is not. Uh, for what it's worth, I have a snowblower with a small tractor. If he really gets stuck. <laughs> oh, I told him the same. We have a four wheeler. We can. Yeah. He cannot I'm hurt himself me. like he did last week yeah. again. Uh, so mean, we've uh, talked all about that as well. <laughs> You can figure out a way. To <laughs> but you do need a backup. We do need a backup. Yeah. If the here, tractor blows and harvest equipment does yeah. isn't open that day, right. Right. Yeah. it just happened to be open, we'd yeah. be in um, a little yeah. bit more trouble than we were. Yeah. Well, that's something he needs. Yeah. Okay. Would you willing to entertain that? I would disagree. I don't want to buy redundant equipment that we may or may not need. A snowblower you think is redundant? If the tractor works, it's redundant. Could sit there for five years, never get used. Or we could have two people out there cleaning. Yeah, that I was going to say. It's it, 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 it wouldn't be ten, ten hours. hours. Tonight's not the night, but <laughs> okay. I, I would value. You know, I could change my mind, and I think we should have the discussion. Uh, yeah. and, I, I and actually agree. We have a vibrant um, capital budget for yeah. this reason, That's right. so yeah. that we can do these things. Yeah. Yeah. I look at that every time, and even with the roof, we're still at seven hundred thousand dollars. We're in a very, very, very good place capital-wise, and it says that we bought the freezer out of capital in the report. So you may want to check. That. It, it ended up not. Okay. It didn't. Should, Floor should, didn't want it to come out of there we because should, of the. We should have just. Yeah, because of the light. Just all, all of it. Yeah, yeah, we we took it out of operating. Yeah. I'm more than comfortable having capital requests come. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got yep. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we, yeah, yeah. And yeah. And the doors are really important because we also we those are the only doors that we still have with wood frames too. Floor wants solid steel doors. <laughs> <laughs> well no, they will have Just steel frames that open them. I don't want this to <laughs> but yeah. Okay. okay. So if yes. you're okay, I can tell Todd to pursue these. I think Three so. items. Yeah, we, we, you will come back with, with just the snowblower. Let's. Uh, so I, feel I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in here. Yeah. I'm going to be really insistent. This yeah. is a capital budget. I never want uh, an okay. I want motions. Right. I'm you have control gonna, over these funds. I've yep. been told very deliberately by almost every board that within the budget, you administrators go do as you yep. need to outside for f funds that are controlled the board need to be motioned and adopted by the board okay. to tell us how to spend i you can tell us how you like right. but i as your superintendent will not support my principles in doing something without that it's direction not explicitly okay so i'm just so going to take a straw poll how what were the everybody three items again so i can tell you the, the interior door work that needs some updating hardware work the replacing of the old art room doors is about four thousand dollars these are just quotes he got they're not exact mm -hmm. we don't have purchase orders so yet. so let's is there any reason we need to jump today it's work that needs to be done. We have I'm not saying it, I'm not saying it doesn't need to be done. Is there a reason why it needs to be approved? Tonight? So let me go to the safety issue. We have classroom doors that no longer latch tight because the hard, we don't have own the hardware to fix them. So in a, in right. a lockdown, there are classroom doors that do not okay. lock currently. So the question so if I'm hearing your question right in your response, it's that this expenditure needs to happen before our next regular meeting. 
that next one. It is a safety issue, I will just say that. It, sh it should happen. Yes. Ideally, it'll better. happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so then the question for us is, uh, I'm comfortable with, with I'm comfortable with the request. I, I, um, yeah, I don't need to say any more than that. Um, I am, so I would I'm, ask I'm if the rest of the board is the one I would making say, a motion yeah. <laughs> so that but then we I'm, can I'm discuss like, it because you know, we, we keep doing yeah, things out of order. People look at the doors. It is not like it, it hasn't been due diligence and RH, you know, so I think that it's, it's good to keep on top of things. So the one that I would say doesn't is not like an emergency is the Zender unit. I mean that we know the exact price of it. I can How tell much you is that? it's it was on here as five thousand dollars. That's um, yeah, but four nine and two. Right? And the snowblower, you know, if we have another storm between now and April break, will we figure it out? Yes, without a snowblower. I think the the most emergent in my mind is the is it's the doors. Door. Yeah. So I would make a motion to fund the four thousand dollars for interior work would that be adequate for the door work yeah and what do you, what more do you need for the other two or you just want to hold on them well you've said we don't need to make a decision on the f well i'm coming so, to the so, so, so alicia i think the board is respectful it's respectful for the board to have allowed to have discussions mm -hmm. unless it's an emergency need i hear some of the board members and the board can tell me i'm all wet on this but they want to have more of a discussion the only thing i've heard you say that it's an emergency need right now is the doors and so i believe the board should be allowed to have that discussion it's up to them if you want to have that in a more deliberate process or not yeah but i think what you were asking was just what other information we need to make that decision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so i think he's uh, getting estimates of the snow blowers so at the next meeting, have the estimate of right. exactly, exactly so what it would Personally, be. I guess I'd like to have a little more um, data on the snowblower. How much is the actual snowblower that, that we're looking at? And part of me is it conflicted because I don't want to be operational. I really just want to yeah, like, say I, I trust you to do the job that we entrust you with. Um, that's the only one that I feel personally that I need more information on. The Zender unit, if you've got a straight price for it and it's $5,000, then it makes complete sense to me to have a spare unit that can be, you know, um, taken for parts, you know, mm -hmm. the donor unit for that. That totally makes sense to me. You take the part out of the loaner unit, put it in the, or you swap the whole thing out, whatever makes sense, <laughs> and let Todd make that decision. Um, and, you know, if the rest of the board doesn't need more conversation about the snowblower, I'm comfortable with that as well. Um, that's the only piece that sort of stands out to me as a little vague and fuzzy at this moment. So I, I, I would actually um, be okay with the $9,000 and uh, have a little more information about the snowblower. I'm okay with that too. Me as well. I don't have a problem with the snowblower because I think when you said something about two people, I was saying, yeah. Yeah, that makes I sense mean, to me too. Get out there and get it done. So There's a lot of sidewalk to clear. A lot of sidewalk to what I would like to know is what are the alternatives are there to purchasing a snowblower? Because what I'm hearing is this is an emergency fallback. If it's an emergency fallback and it costs $2,000, but we can, we can, um, uh, Ruben for two hundred dollars will bring his snowblower up and do it in an emergency. Then why do we need to spend two thousand dollars for something that we may never use when we've got a two hundred dollar option to meet that need? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's just a I think I think it 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 serves two purposes. The snowblower one is we, with the exception of last week when Todd was the only one here, we always have our maintenance staff here, and there's that's three people, uh, and it would not take ten hours to do that work. It would take five hours to do that work. So that, so if we had something like that, it wouldn't just sit and not be used for 
until an emergency. Um, the other options that we've looked at, he has made calls, which he's done. This isn't the first snowstorm that the equipment has not worked. It's when it, it uh -oh. you all know. It always breaks at the worst no. possible yes. time, of course, and everybody's yes. backed up and So maxed he out. has called yeah. around and he has asked um, the people that we use right now and they're, when there's a snowstorm like that, everybody is out straight. Mm -hmm. There's no right. And I said to Bill, could we use U32 equipment or people? And he said, they're just as out straight as you are here. And so um, I don't know of another great solution. Mm -hmm. So our current company just doesn't do the sidewalk work. Not. Is there another company we should look at to perform? Well, you know, that, most that's of our the, yes, the, answer, the answer is yes, there are other companies that will do that work. There are, but part of the reason we bought the tractor with the attachments is that mm -hmm. we didn't have to farm out, right? Exactly. Out right. A lot of and you can react immediately yep. if it starts yep. snowing at noon You're and the kids waiting. have to get on the bus yep. and yeah. the parents are showing up. It's a safety right. factor on the sidewalks. Yep. And it's and a similar discussion to what we had about the side of the road mowing equipment mm -hmm. for the town. Exactly. <laughs> yep, right. Instead of trying to... It's within our control when it happens. I, mm -hmm. I get it. Unless they both break down. Oh, true. And then we don't have a backup because we're using them both. Well, the time. backup is we would so we would we hope they both don't the, break. Yeah. I think right. our backup well, that is, is that is the backup. Said. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. If if we're using them consistently, then are they likely to both break at the same time? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Although you know, I don't know what broke, but this last snow was a really heavy wet okay, snow, yeah. and it was hard on equipment. Yes. So that's when equipment breaks. <laughs> anyway, I think we've talked this at <laughs> fairly well to death at this point. Um, so I'm going to ask: Do we need further conversation about this, or? Well, we should have a motion. Of something. You have a motion. So yeah. you made a motion for 5K. 4,000. Sorry, $4,000. Sorry. The so other, we, sorry, oh. just to throw a wrench in. The other thing I can do is come back next month with very solid numbers for you. I, these were just mm -hmm. he and I sitting down and saying, here's a quote from RH. It's not, it, the quote was actually for over $7,000, but there's things that aren't necessary or you know emergencies on there so we were prioritizing on that list um i could come back with exact numbers for you i think we meet again next week no is there a yeah, two uh, weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. actually a but week from this wednesday we this week from we'll wednesday. see yeah. after the executive committee there might be a meeting um because that's the last week so it, here's the question that i'm going to ask are we delaying things if we like is rh going to come in before our next meeting. No, they're not going to come until we tell them. So we pay them. Right? <laughs> we'll show them the so, you know, I understand. Nothing, but, two weeks but, is not going to make or break anything. Okay. Well, but we could just pass the door money and get that going because that's a safety yep. factor right. and have more information for more the other two. I think we're unanimous on yeah. The do doors that. need fixing. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're so unanimous. That would, why I have a motion and motion. I think you seconded. Yeah. Do we need further discussion on that? Okay. All of those in favor <laughs> of approving a capital expenditure of $4,000 for the interior work, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Okay, and then we'll talk about the rest of it in our next meeting. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that Probably is has the administration right now report. <laughs> no more snow. No more snow. Um, is there anything more on the fiscal report? Uh, just, just if I could, if you could make that correction. Mm -hmm. The freezer didn't come out that correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. So it's just reflecting that. Where are you looking that you. Page seven. So did the board take. I want to. I, 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 freezer 55, Can I go back to something? Sure. Did the board take action for the freezer to come out of Capitol? The board took action. It was in the fall at a U32 meeting, and the decision was not to take it from Capitol. In that, in that in board. The board meeting. In the board meeting. Yes. Okay. So then the, <laughs> probably the note is wrong, but we'll check that note. Where do you see it on the slide? Because usually yeah. things do not oh, get things unless we see board. Oh, it says roof and freezer roof and, and water. Right here. 
My page it's just it's over there by 55,000. Yeah, right here. Oh. But there's, yeah. it's not down the itemized list on the left. That's why I wasn't seeing it. Correct. We'll fix that. I'm not going to lose this. It's just an observation. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed. Okay. Anything else on the fiscal report? Mm -hmm. I think there's much fiscal. should really know this. Do we need a motion to accept the fiscal no. report? No. No, no action. Thank you. Um, I think that brings us to seven to approve the board orders. So I make a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of sixteen thousand eight hundred twenty nine dollars and seventy nine cents. I'll second it. That's why any discussion? <laughs> mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Future agenda items. Okay. We'll 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 a whole bunch there in a minute. Did I not sign that? You signed all the ones. Tiffany, you got all those ones we were doing. Thank you. Uh, board communication, and I believe that brings us to adjournment at 740.